fun. Hello and welcome to the Steam Release Podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne, aka Dewey Bear, and with me, the stupendously serendipitous Shadowlick is uh, hey there. Is all the way from Sweden. Yeah, all the mm. way from Sweden. It's a long way. Or as you would say, I'm all the way from the US. <laughs> yeah, you are all, all the way from the US, yeah. A uh, spook police, hello! Hello, I'm glad to see you. Glad to see you. Formerly known as Gigi. Hmm. Yes, I am I am flattered that you consider consider me one of your two favorites. So I'm very glad. Uh we are here with a full list of um Excellent games, but you know, before we get into that, uh, Shadowlick, I would like to know what have you been playing this last week? Well, I am uh, have been playing uh, Overwatch, of course, my favorite game. Uh, I have also been playing Seven Days to Die. I have also tried uh, a game that we are going to bring up on the list here, so... Call of Chatulu, or how you pronounce that? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've heard Cthulhu. But, I but mostly Seven Days to Die and uh, Overwatch. Mm -hmm. Seven Days to Die and so? Overwatch. Never played uh, Seven Days to Die, but uh, yeah, Overwatch is. I've just started uh, getting my placement matches in this last week. Um, uh, and also been doing some Final Fantasy fourteen. As that game still has me in its clutches, and I, I've been kind of getting back into Darkest Dungeon, which is a really fun game if you've never checked it out. Uh, actually, a really yeah, good game for when you're sick. Game. It's a good game to play like when you're not feeling really well, because it's kind of like you can take your time on all your turns. It's still stimulating to the noggin, but yeah, yep, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun yeah. naming the characters after people you know and having them die horribly. I hope I can be one of the characters then. <laughs> yeah. So far, I think only two have tied so far. I've been pretty good at leading, leading my party through the Darkest Dungeon, but uh, yeah. <laughs> that's only going to last so long. Yeah. Yeah, I watched you play that game, and it's kind of a... Looks fun, but strange, sort of. Can I say mm -hmm. that without uh, getting getting in trouble? But well, well. yeah, it is. A, it's a pretty strange game. It's it definitely uh, altered the sort of turn based uh, uh, turn based RPG a lot. It really kind of alt. It really kind of altered that. Like, it brought it back into gaming prestige again. Like they kind of redid the formula a little bit. And now they're starting to be clones of Darkest Dungeon, which is sort of a sign that it success that it succeeded. So, oh, yep. interesting. Oh, cool. And as we were talking about Overwatch, there is a lot of Overwatch news because this week it is BlizzCon. Now, yes, Blizzard games are not on Steam, but uh, we'd we'd be remiss to not talk a little bit about games that we're passionate about. Um, but yeah, that old, new Overwatch character, Ash. Oh, she, she, she will be so amazing. <laughs> I'm so much looking forward to her. She's badass. Yeah, I like the quick scope. The quick scope looks really fun, and uh, also Bob. Bob, Bob is just a just a dapper gent, and I adore that. So it's cool. Yeah, I look looking forward to that. I think ah. she will be live next week. Yeah, hopefully the the uh the skins look really good. Like, well, I haven't showed off any skins, but I'm thinking like there's gonna be some really great uh catalog skin. Rudy Pie, thank you so much for being on stop by. It's nice to see you. It's pretty early hey, morning Rupai. for you. I know that much. Um, Spook Police going to make dinner. Well, yes, eating is important. Um. And yeah, there's uh, also on the other side like a uh, Warcraft Three Remaster, uh, yeah, which is not a game I'm. I do not like RTSs. Just uh, step away. I've never been good at them. I've never really been into them that much. Uh, don't, don't 
don't tell don't tell my cousins because they always like have me play Age of Empires and I I hate that game so much. But I love my cousins, so I play it. <laughs> yeah, and this will be uh, amazing. Warcraft yeah. three in uh, in with better graphics and stuff that would be like heaven. Uh, I will play that when it's arrived. I will play that. I will like book a whole week, 24 hours, and I will just sit here until I fall asleep playing that game. So, <laughs> oh. From what I heard, it has a pretty good like single player campaign, um, along with its com competitive multiplayer. And it's got a... Yeah, and from what I've so heard so far is that people like... There's a risky thing about updating a game like that after so many years, is that you can really screw with the aesthetic. But from what I've seen and from what I've heard from people who are experienced in the game with the game, it the the new shiny paint still like very much feels like it's still War, War, Warcraft three. So yeah, but Blizzard has is known for they can sort of do whatever they like with the game, but they can also like keep keep the core magic of the game that that is uh, that all the players like. And, um, well, they have, like, 15 years mm -hmm. on top, so they, they know what they do, and they don't do things and just release them to, to earn money, because they, when they release something, uh, it is, like, almost perfect from start. Uh, so I think this will be good, and people in the community are so hyped for this so well yeah i'm looking forward to it yep and and blizzard blizzard the name means polish at this point so you know yeah. it's gonna be a good product and uh yeah there's a uh, wow classic that's that's confirmed for 2019 now too so 2019 is <laughs> gonna be a big year for blizzard oh yeah 2019 will be like the year uh Wolf Classics. I I I have played World of Warcraft since the first beta, and well, everyone is talking about the old World of Warcraft, mm -hmm. uh, the first World of Warcraft, and and now people can like play that again and feel what we did back then when you had to like. Hopefully, you you met someone out on the fields that could tell you where to go, mm -hmm. because there was almost no clues on the internet. There was almost no internet for that sake, and uh, well, now now you the the modern World of Warcraft, you can like check the map and go to the point and do what you're supposed to do. Back then, you can took like a week to find the right spot and when you thought you were on the right spot you were like on the wrong map uh so and finally you found someone that have done the quest and they like well i can show you and well yeah it's more magic back then and i can finally show my kids yeah the basic world of warcraft this would be amazing amazing Something I am also sort of uh, hoping for, really, is that uh, so like, while uh, Blizzard doesn't do this, but um, the developers for uh, EverQuest and I believe Tryon did this too, um, where they had progression servers. So I think a classic server is very important, and like um, EverQuest and uh, and Rift both have classic servers, where it's just the vanilla version of the game. But then they also have progression servers, which like it starts in the vanilla version and it goes through the updates again, like every three months or so um, until it gets caught up and then they, you know, they start over. And I think that's something that I would actually kind of also like to see eventually as a progression server so that you can kind of see what the game was like as it happened. Um... So that's kind of what I want to see as well. Yeah, well, they have like, they have uh, put in some small things 
uh, in World of Warcraft now, where you can like teleport back in time. Oh yeah, time walking dungeons. Yeah. Yeah, and that is uh, kind of a fun thing, but uh, this will be, and I hope what you're saying that that they also will have progression servers, so you can like don't get stuck somewhere. But the best thing is that mm -hmm. you will not have to buy anything to to play uh, Boob Classic. Oh really? Is it still just going to be a sub? Yeah, all you need is uh, an active subscription of like you have now when you play World of Warcraft, and then you can. I don't know how how they do it if you download something or if you like. Click I the, imagine because the it's going to be using the modern, so it's going to be using the modern server net code. Um, I imagine it's simply just going to be like a button inside the standard launcher where it's just like, oh, so you have WoW your normal server that you'd log into, and then you just have, like, a server that's, like, this is the classic server. And you can just... Yeah, I think up. so, too. I'm pretty sure it's all going to be one launcher. I doubt there's yeah, going to be separate. And I don't, I don't... Well, the hardcore World of Warcraft would, I think, pay for, for WoW Classic, but hmm. consider they have, like... If you go, like, eight, nine years back... They have like 15, 18 million go out now and uh, attract new players by forcing them to, to buy uh, Vogue Classic. I don't think they can do that uh, yeah. because people don't know. They have, have just heard that everything was better back then. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think I, uh, I think, think that... most people like there is of course the hardcore fans where it's like yes I want Bob Classic back, but I also think yeah a lot of the hype is people who are just like I want to experience what that was like. I've I'm, yeah I think that's a huge part of it is people wanting to see see what all the fuss yeah. is about. Yeah, but this will be fantastic, and they also bringing back the old uh, system to to set your uh, talent points and oh that will be amazing i can go back to my old setup i i remember i i know mm -hmm. where to click and how to click so this will be yeah this will i looking forward to this very much <laughs> be like traveling back in time oh yeah well that's uh that's yeah that's gonna be cool for uh really a lot of people yeah a lot of people are gonna have a real blast of a time with that uh yeah. yeah and then uh oh destiny 2 is free so until november 18th so if you have the uh blizzard launcher you can pick up destiny 2 it's it's free so yeah and in and insanely big yes it's huge but yeah, yeah if, you, if you if you do get it and add it to your account you have it forever just as long as you get it yeah november 18th that and is cool. then also the last thing of BlizzCon news is that there's nothing about Diablo, and we can move on. Um, okay, that there's a little something about Diablo, but uh, I just mm, mm, I'm mad about it. Um, not about the existence of a mobile Diablo game. I'm just, you know it was just a matter of time. Like they they make mobile editions of their games, and it's fine. The problem is it's a mobile edition of the game announced on a main stage. You know, a main stage that people pay thousands of dollars to travel to to see. Uh, many of them being to live Diablo fans, because Diablo is like one of the four main tenants of uh, Blizzard. So, you know, the four main franchises. Um, and uh, just to have like that, it's like, oh, mobile game. No news about a new class in Diablo 3. No news about, you know, maybe an expansion that's in the works. Uh, I didn't think that Diablo 4 would be announced. I had my doubts about that. Um, but, you know, just nothing about, like, the core base of Diablo. You know what? Even a Diablo 2 or Diablo 1 remastered would have been just like, oh, something like that. I mean, I know that's... I don't want to trivialize that. I worked in game development. I know how much work it is. Like, honestly, I do. But it's just a really bad optics. Uh, and so any, like, the marketing team should have realized that, like, you know, we can announce, like, a Diablo mobile game at Gamescom. You can announce it at, you know, 
uh, the uh, G Star. You, you, there's so many different gaming conventions and events where it'd be perfectly appropriate to mention it, and um, people wouldn't care. People would be like, "Oh, cool, a mobile version of Diablo, whatever." There would still be some Diablo fans going like, "Update when?" <laughs> but, yeah. uh, um, and so it's it is. I think at this point it's pretty obvious that. Uh, I think what hurts is that a lot of us Diablo fans, because Diablo and Overwatch are the two franchises of Blizzard that I care about. Uh, and it really does seem like Diablo has been put by the wayside, and that's probably not going to change. So, Yeah, I have spoken to uh, a couple of more friends, and they are like you. They are... They do some strange sound when you mention Diablo and let go, go like <clears throat> yes yeah so uh, and Blizzard need to need to take that seriously because well uh, Diablo is not that it's not a small community so they need to to figure something out mm -hmm. and give some news about that game or they will probably have some troubles. I put down money so fast for that necromancer. <laughs> Excuse me. But yes, I got that necromancer because uh, that necromancer update was fun. And you know what? The new levels were fun. It's a fun game. But uh, yeah, I would like to see more to that universe. Uh, even though Diablo 3, let's be frank, like Diablo 3 lore wise kind of ended in a very uh, final way. Like, it definitely felt pretty final <laughs> how it ended. So, um, but yeah, so that's back to actual Steam news. We have a release list this week. Uh, no more no more Blizzard stuff. That's that's just because BlizzCon happened this week. Now it's back to the release list, and we have some juicy ones for y'all. Uh, starting with Monday, October 29th, we have the game Call of Cthulhu. And, and uh, this game is, well, you know what, I've, I'm not really into horror games, so I have been watching people stream this, this seems to be kind of like, a, not a Twitch, it's, it's first person, but it's definitely not a Twitch game, it's kind of a, it's more of a sneak, survival, almost horror type game. Um, but Shadowlick, you have played it, so I would love to hear yeah. your opinion. Well, this game is uh, the when I first looked at it, I I thought like, nah, this is not nothing for me. <sighs> but then I thought, well, I need to try it because mm. they have so many like different side of this game. You have this. Um, anti-hero sort of character you play uh, and when you start playing the game it's like more or less what I hate a clicking game you need to click millions of different answers and questions and stuff like that but I also noticed that it's like hooked me Mm -hmm. I got hooked into the game and it's like tricked me into some false sense of security to suddenly change to go from this clicking kind of boring game to an epic like horror game that almost made me get a heart attack. Uh, and this is not like they have uh, that sudden fear that scares you like whoa. But it's also built up something that you... So I ended up uh, shutting down the game. Yeah? Yeah, because I uh, I thought that I would, would be like paranoid. Because I saw things in the game that uh, I am not sure is really there. So I need to play the first part again. Just to <laughs> stick, check if I saw what I saw because... It tricks you to see things. Well, they build up this tension of fear, uh, 
and you almost feel like you are a detective. And I can understand that he have, uh, well, he liked to drink, uh, yeah. and he drinks too much. And I, well, I That's cannot awesome. blame him <laughs> because he have. You cannot figure out if this game actually is inside his. For me, that is, I was thinking, is it inside his head, or is he really like solving the 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 job he got from a woman? So I cannot figure out if it because he have a lot of strange, fucked up thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have. Sorry for the language, but you need to say that because mm. he is damaged. This guy is damaged. He has so many um, dark thoughts, dark feelings. Uh, yeah, this you need to play this game. It is. Everyone it is, it is really it. neat. Uh, that if you know if that's the case, because like uh, the you know Cthulhu is very much from H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, which H.P. Lovecraft, his form of horror and like shock literature was all about not just the monsters but on the monster inside everyone yeah. and like it makes people feel uncomfortable because uh because like part of cthulhu is not just like the concept of like the cthulhu that's like god that drives people mad it's not just about like the terribleness of like these eldritch horrors but also about like how twisted just people naturally are um, and it's cool that they definitely like they the Cyanide Studios did a good job in like portraying that in it. Um, Rody Pie brings up that yeah, it's more of an adventure game and it probably confused people. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm just definitely a good game to stream because uh, it will probably keep your keep your chat chatting like what's going on. Yeah, but if you if you stream this game, you really need to like. Mm -hmm. uh, follow the story and don't you can you can like uh, hold down the the space key to to skip a uh, lot of the the talk in the game but to stream this game you need to let it be the great story that this game is mm -hmm. because this is a great story with many different uh, sort of side tracks uh well, I yeah, I have played this uh, just 11 minutes uh, on stream, and I have played it like three hours uh, off stream. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love this game, and I never thought I would do that, but yeah, uh, Lovecraft can mess with your minds. A game that that's genre that. decide, define, like, uh, a game that's in a genre that you wouldn't normally like, that convinces you to like it is is a good game um yeah. like for example uh the last of us like i do not like these sort of like survival horror shooter games but last of us was so good that i i loved it it is uh it kind of opened up a new type of gameplay for me yeah. um yep good game i love this game i i, I absolutely love this game it's been a good year for like double A dark fantasy titles too, because I remember earlier this year there was a vampire that came out. Um, it's just been a good year for double A games in general, honestly. Well, this has been a good year for triple A's, but uh, yeah, these double A titles are uh, really cool hidden gems. Well, not hidden gems; they're they're pretty well known. I <laughs> uh, see. This is like a. And it's not a short game either. I'm seeing like people with uh thirty some odd hours of gameplay on here. My word. Yeah, it's a big game. Uh, uh yeah. you you will definitely need like uh not necessarily the highest tier of a gaming PC, but you will definitely need to have a graphics card to play this game. This is not one of those more uh this is not something you can get away with integrated uh processor graphics no so. you will not uh, you need uh, a gaming pc but but you don't don't need the uh, the newest uh, cards and yeah. stuff but you need to definitely need a gaming pc to play this game and it'll cost you the double a price of 45 dollars us dollars uh i don't know how many euros or a krona i don't know what sweden uses anymore 
Well, we we use Kronor, and that is like uh, four hundred. I paid four hundred and sixty-five uh, Kronors, and that is like uh, oh. Okay, so yeah. it's almost exactly ten kroner to a dollar. Yeah, all, all, well, it's from day to day, but yeah, yeah. So, I paid four hundred sixty-five kroners for for mine. Oh and, yeah, you have to read out out everything, which does mean that like if you're streaming it, as Rodis is saying, like if you're streaming it, it does. Uh, uh, <laughs> you better have a lot of love and water and honey. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Because your throat is going to get raspy, but, uh, I mean, I could use my voice getting a bit more raspy. Um, let me see. And that's uh, that's the only title from Monday, uh, Call of Cthulhu. It's $45. I'm personally not putting it on my wish list, but you know what? Shadow Lake is sold on it. So um, I do recommend if you're into the Eldritch Horrors, uh, this is probably the game of, you know, the year in that sub-genre for you to check out. Yes. Uh, on Tuesday, we're going to go into an entirely different note for the releases on Tuesday, October 30th, with uh, Tatsu... <laughs> Tasukete Tako-san, also known as Save Me Mr. Tako. Uh, this is a retro... This is a retro double-A platformer um, in the vein of kind of like an indie Kirby. And it is very, very cute. Uh, so yeah, if uh, I'm pretty much sold on it, I uh, oh, I thought I had actually already put it on my wish list, but I haven't. But yeah, you you know you know what my impression of this is already. What are your thoughts? Yeah, the, well, this is actually quite far from what I play. Mm -hmm. But when I saw this game, I said to myself, I need to try this game. Uh, just because it's like getting me back to the Nintendo 8-bit sort of feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was also playing on Amiga and Atari and stuff like that oh, yeah. back then. And it's, it's so much like that, but still not. So I... I need to I need to try this game. It's yeah. it's so cute. And with it being in more in the realm of Kirby, it has to a degree a bit more uh, adventure than like say a Mario game. Um, at least in my, at least at least from what I can tell. Like uh, in in Cur in Kirby's, it's all about like unlocking new powers and uh, seeing what else you can do. But yeah, this this is very much sort of that Game Boy Color era aesthetic yeah. and oh it's it is very very sweet i like it a lot oh. yeah i need to try this i i put it on my my uh wish list and then mm -hmm. i have to see what happened but uh yeah, yeah. If, I'm you, curious. if you have kids or grandkids uh this is definitely a game to possibly possibly get for them this upcoming christmas so uh if if you want them to like get for get their start with some retro style, um, retro style art, because oh, this is this just this just charmed me as soon as I saw it, uh, and it's only going for about ten dollars, so it's a uh, it's a bargain. Oh, I see it's developed by Christopher Galati, who uh, and Nicholas Incorporated. Okay, Nicholas Incorporated is actually a fairly known well known developer. I guess because they make binding, they made Binding of Isaac, Cave Story, Night Sky, A Thousand One Spikes, Castle in the Darkness, and The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, of course, and Afterbirth. Yep. So, yeah. Dang. Yeah. They are... I'm thinking the same thing that okay. you are thinking there, uh, Rodipai, that if it has secret doors and stuff like that, well, then it's a, a perfect buy. Yes, Rody, it looks so so cute. Now, let me see about as far as length of game. Some of these can be end up being really short, but I'm seeing a well a Korean review that is a uh, uh for fourteen hours of gameplay. Um, but a lot of the reviews seem to be four to six hours, which I imagine 
in these types of games, it really depends on how good you are at them as to like how long, how many hours you're going to get out of it. If you're really good at platformers, I could probably see you finishing this game in four hours. Um, but depends on what you personally consider finished, because if they have secrets, there's extra stuff to do. Yeah, uh, you might have a lot of hours enjoyment out of this. Will you help this brave octopus to spread his message of tolerance and unity? That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so there's a war between the octopus kingdom and the human world. Oh, that's cute. Oh my gosh. Well. well that is very this cute. is what I like with Steam. They have lots of uh, uh, games like this that uh, mm -hmm. bring you back to when gaming was, in my eyes, gaming was gaming. Uh, yeah. Now it's uh, mostly kill stuff. But yeah. back then it was like uh, small games with uh, like secret doors and secret dungeons and you save the princess or whatever, stuff like that. So yeah, it's amazing. Oh man. It 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 looks adorable, and yeah, it is taking me back to those days. So it is going on my wish list, absolutely. I'm surprised it wasn't already on my wish list. That is uh, that is strange. I could have sworn I put it on my wish list, but uh, and of course, as you would expect, this uh, this game has pretty low uh, requirements. You do not need a graphics card to play this game, so you don't have a uh, if you don't have a uh, gaming PC. This is another game on Steam for you. Oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, the next title is a bit more of a meme game? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, Kaiju Big Battle Phyto Fantasy. Uh, there's an enemy, his head's a box, and he's uh, summoning kaiju to destroy the world, and you have to stop him. And it basically plays like a Final Fantasy RPG. This game, I have looked at this game so many times, and uh, when I was, uh, when I didn't know that I will be a part of of uh, this podcast thing, mm -hmm. and I saw this game on the list, I did go like, yes, oh, really? I'm here, and this game, oh, I don't know what it is with this game, but when I I have looked at it so many times. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't have it, but I, I want this game. Mm -hmm. I don't want no, know what it is. It's like me getting like a Zelda vibe, sort of. Still not Zelda. I don't know yeah. what it, it is. Something with this game. Yeah, it definitely like it definitely has that sort of like. Uh, it makes me think Final Fantasy, but it has a lot of like it doesn't take itself seriously. It's very. It's very comedic. Uh, I like the sort of aesthetic of like the kaijus. It reminds me of those like kind of hokey live action kaiju battle TV shows from Japan. Which... Yeah. <laughs> which I've seen every now and then. And uh, yeah, you know what? they're just trying to they're just trying to be funny. And it just has a lot of charm. Um, great artwork. Uh, and it's, uh, you know what, this is, this is a good, this is a good funny, that is a turkey. Yes, you're fighting a turkey, so, ready for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have one wish for games like this, and that is that it would be a two-player co-op. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so this is developed by, uh... Christopher, oh no, Paul Harrington. Harrington. I have relatives with that last name, and there's not too many people with that last name, so I'm like, hmm. Anyhow, uh, yeah, so he has also developed another game called Sea Cane, which looks far less polished on first uh, interaction. No softened lines. It looks like it's drawn in paint. So you know what? Oh my gosh, and he even has like photograph backgrounds for battles. What? Well, you know what? Kudos to you, uh, Paul Harrington. You've made, um, you've made 
uh, some progression in your design. So, you know, just straight up. I'm like, hmm, you know what? Uh, it gives hope because when I go through the release list, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of titles that are just kind of really um, not great. But uh, I like to be able to go through and see. Uh, it's nice to see like, you know, his other game. If I saw that on the release list, I would not have chosen it. But it's cool that, you know, he, he's come back with something new and it looks really legit good. I'm very, it's a, it's encouraging. Maybe someday, maybe someday all that sort of like wheelbarrow of not so, so great games, like they'll come back with second games and I'm like, oh, this catches my eye. So, a guy can wish. Well, I, w I will uh, definitely get this game. I want this game. I don't know why, but I want it. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm going to get it and I'm going to show all the world how great this game is, I think. And mm -hmm. I hope. It also does have a free demo, so uh, we got nothing to lose to check it out. Uh, yeah. It normally goes for $10. It's on a 10% discount at the moment. And uh, yeah, um, I am quite impressed. I'm quite impressed. Uh, Paul Harrington has clearly worked very hard on this. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely very interested to see like how, uh, how, how, how I will be able to get into a story that doesn't take itself seriously. There are people who can do that very well. Like uh, if you ever seen like um, uh, <laughs> uh, fractured butthole, <laughs> South Park, which uh, despite not taking itself seriously, like it was, you know, the story keeps you going, like wanting to see what's next. So. This is this is probably a bit more family friendly than that, so. But yeah, I shoot big battle, Fatal Fantasy. Uh, yeah, guess it's going on both of our wish lists. And again, I do not think. Yeah, this does not. This is again another game that does not require any graphics card. So, yay. Uh, our next title, The Witch's House and V. Um, this is, this is actually, I don't know too much about this title, but I have been informed by a friend of mine, this is actually an old game that came out many years ago. It's a Japanese horror RPG, uh, kind of puzzle, type puzzly game, um, developed by Fumi. It's fairly well known, but, and my cousin knows a lot about it, but I don't, but, uh, yeah. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, I think I have seen this or something uh, close to this game before. So, yeah, I think this is, uh, like your friends say, an old game that is brought back to life, sort of. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, uh, since I saw this list, uh, done some research and I have uh, got hold of two streamers that stream this game and they told me this game is uh, very good mm. uh, uh, they told me the atmosphere in the game is amazing you get like uh, um, a creepy sort of like yeah a very unsettled the whole time yeah and uh, they told me uh, to uh, that I need to try this game, but I need to have an open mind. More than mm. that, they well, so I need to have an open mind for something, and I don't know what, but uh, I will figure that out. Yep. Uh, when people tell me that I need to try it, well, I think I need to try it. I <laughs> see. Uh, um, it is published by Duncan Entertainment, which uh, has published a few of the things like Crosscode, Super Sports Match, and Brave Earth and Iconoclasts. Uh, so, you know, it is a fairly well known sort of retro style publisher. Well, you know, kind of recently well known because most of those games are all fairly recent to the scene. But um, Crosscode is definitely their big success. But yeah, there's an, there's an old game. Uh, I've definitely had it recommended to me. Um, 
I I don't think I'm down for the down for a horror game, but uh, it definitely is a fitting for an October gameplay. Yeah, as long as the games like uh, either you need a, a horror game uh, like just freaks you out in, in any way possible, but games like this, I think they need to have an atmosphere with. And I just read here too that. Uh, headphones strongly recommended. So mm. I will say, if they don't have the right uh, sound in games like this, it will ruin the game. But something tells me, because they said headphones strongly recommended, the sound will will kind of freak you out. I think so. Yep. This is a this so. is also an RPG maker game done right uh, per per Rody Pie. And yes, like just because a game is made an RPG maker doesn't mean it's bad. But it has to be a quality title from RPG Maker for to make it this list. Because generally, if I can tell that it was made in RPG Maker, I'm just like, no. But this game, this game clearly has a lot of polish and work behind it. And it's not just an asset flip. And that's impressive. That's impressive. They did, uh, Fumi did something very interesting with, uh, with RPG Maker here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so for, for all done the... it... oh, uh, it... go ahead. If they've done it the right way, even mm-hmm. though it's a uh, RPG uh, maker, it can be good, but they need to do it the right way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. So. I've I really respect a lot of RPG maker uh, devs, and I've got quite a few RPG maker games in my library. Um, some of them better than others, but uh, yeah, it's it's a cool place to start, especially as a young developer. But at the same time, you have to have a realistic view of your talents and where you are. Because like releasing a not so great game of Steam onto Steam, it's just it's just putting you back a thousand bucks for for no real reason. Uh, no one because it's just gonna disappear in the release list, and it's just not gonna be worth anyone's time. So just uh, but if you make a quality one and you you know properly test it, make a real original music original art assets uh and yeah that's a lot of mun time and money uh to make but if you put it into that like yeah rpg maker games can be classics yeah uh, and uh they have not that many reviews but they are still very positive so <laughs> yeah well, 123. That's actually a lot of a uh, lot of reviews for uh, the release list podcast, because uh, yeah, we often kind of I often like try to hunt down the really like unknown games. Um, yeah. But yeah, another another title is a uh, Orphan, which uh, Shadowlick recommended. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, give us your spiel. This game, so much give me the the feeling of limbo mm-hmm. when you see the 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 trailer uh, it's the shadows the the way you walk uh, and limbo for me is one of the best ever games made because a game like 2d that can like pull you in and, and hold you and make you want to see uh, the next what happened next mm-hmm. it's an amazing feeling so uh, yeah this game this game I think is a must I, it must be no user reviews but the game was uh, released like just a couple of days ago so yep yeah this uh, this definitely looks like uh you know, a fairly polished like uh, in- game inspired by uh, Orphan. Um, the artwork is interesting, so that shadow puppet aesthetic, uh, which you know can can work. It's it. What's nice about the shadow puppet aesthetic is it helps the developers save a lot of money <laughs> on art, but at the same time, it has just a certain appeal to it that's still like visually pleasing. Uh, just the main thing is just making sure you don't go that. You're still able to always see where your character is, even though it is a shadow um, puppet situation. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's especially good for very sort of somber games, too. You're not really going to make a cheerful game with a shadow puppet aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, and for, for those who have played like Limbo and also this sort of games, when you look at, uh, look at this picture you have up here now, you can just stand watching things in the background. You see new things every time you look at the same picture. Mm -hmm. And well, yeah, this game. This game I'm going to get today, actually. Oh, wow, wow, yes. So it so is a. This, I is think a definite is grab a for Shadow Lake. And yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's fifteen dollars. Uh, fifteen buckaroos. Uh, hundred and sixty krona. What about that? Yeah. Yeah. And but it's cheaper in in Europe. We have uh, eleven. Euros and ten percent off. So uh, I would get this game for like hundred and fifteen Swedish crowns, and that is like a pizza. So yeah, pizza. Oh, I had and... a pizza yesterday. It was good. <laughs> um, no, not gonna order a pizza tonight. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't tempt yourself. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you're gonna need a. Uh, you probably don't, it's, it's, if you have a computer with a graphics card, you can probably run this game. It's, uh, it's not, it's not going to be too difficult. Uh, it is developed by Windy Hill. Have they done anything else? Nope. This is Windy Hill's first Steam game. So, uh, best of luck to them. And hopefully people will notice them. Ah, so it has an update up there, but there are some reviews. Um, they are mostly positive with up to 12 hours. Yeah. So, okay. So it has been noticed. That is good. The uh, all oh, review nice. section doesn't always update. But yeah. Yep. That's good. That, that warms my heart because I would feel really bad if a game like this would get ignored because this is definitely, you know, a cream yeah. of the crop indie game. Move, move, move down to the reviews again there. Um, okay. Do you? Uh, uh, you say it say they noted good audio quality. Uh, uh, go down. I saw something that some go down more. Someone had wrote. I saw limbo. Oh yeah, it is similar to the feature hit limbo. So there. if you enjoyed any aspect of that masterpiece, you will enjoy yeah. this work of art. Uh, yeah. Make note that it's also very challenging. Also, thematically, this is slightly different than Limbo. There's this this game is about uh, robot aliens invading Earth, and uh, you're you may be the only survivor. So you've got to scrounge and get weapons and protect yourself against the invaders. So. Oh, I know what I'm going to do t tonight. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Right. And that is Orphan. Uh, that's all for the Tuesday releases. Next, let's get to the Halloween releases, which are actually less spooky than I thought they would be. Um, there's actually quite a variety of titles. Uh, and starting out, we're going to start with Rise Race the Future, if it, it'll load. There we go. So... This is a sort of um, prototype car racing game. It seems a bit more arcadey than, say, a Forza. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know what? I'm every now and then I'm down for a racing game, uh, and uh, just want to make sure that the racing fans out there know that this is uh, available on Steam. Well, I'm a race guy, and. Uh, when I saw this game, I was like, wow, this looks uh, amazing. Yeah, it's not hyper realistic, but it has a really nice aesthetic, you know, nice art, art, uh, good bright colors, which is, you know, something that can kind of be missing in the genre. Uh, yeah. They have like the nice bright colors. It just makes you think it just, you know, summertime. Uh, well, you know, then it has the snowy scene, but you know, it makes me think that like overall it's just like this bright colorful And that's what I like to see in games, especially games that are 3d because uh, More often than not like bright colors get relegated to pixel art games. So yeah The only thing they do like uh, sadly with 
uh, racing games uh, well racing game that uh, that is not uh, the biggest brand that we all know about is that it is uh, mostly for one player mm -hmm. no multiplayer and uh, oh, yeah i yeah, like i i like i like to to sit at home uh, with the racing game and stuff like that so that is really not a problem but as a uh, as to see it as a streamer uh, it would be fantastic to find a racing game that you actually can race together online oh yeah uh, that would be fun but I can I I can surely play this game and enjoy it and have a blast at home but still it would be like if you have a family, kids, whatever, husband, wife, whatever, like, you like to race, but you cannot do that because it's one player. That is kind of sad. Not yeah. bad, but sad. Yeah. Yeah, This uh, th that would definitely be a good thing for them to add, uh, would be to some, uh, so some co-op and such. Um, hopefully the uh, single-player campaign or whatever they do have in here is uh, decently long, though, because that can be lacking in a racing game. Um, I'm seeing, like, five hours on a Russian review, four hours in a French review. Oh, can do this. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. It's it, it not necessarily a bad thing that it's not co-op or or online multiplayer, but still, uh, maybe they implement that in the later stage if the game goes good. So I hope people buy this game and tell mm -hmm. them to make make multiplayer. Okay. Uh, there's unfortunately yeah. no English reviews, but this rough French review is uh, is mentioning that it's uh, uh 144 hertz possible and 21 by 9 screen resolution uh, is uh, is available. It's similar to Ridge Late Racer, but this game only has six to seven uh, uh, environments, type of environments, um, and does not have a city environment because he would like a DLC with a more city sort of racing environment. But uh, but yeah. Um, it's sort of an arcade racer. It is going for sixteen dollars, so uh, there's a lot of replay with racers, to be fair. But um, if you're not a racing enthusiast, uh, a game like this would probably not not give you your money's worth. Um, no, I would do with that. So yeah, but, uh, but it look it looks uh, when you look at the picture and stuff, it look uh, like. Mm -hmm. uh, color, colorful and all that so yeah. Yeah. Rectify, yes it is nice polished the cars look very polished too um but yeah as aesthetically wise this is what i'm looking for in a racing game not that yeah, so too. much hyper realism but kind of that like idealism that's sort of like oh this is how the how pretty everything could how cool and pretty everything could look not necessarily yep. like hyper realistic it's it's a neat it's a neat looking uh game so, see, I don't know how many total tracks there are. This uh, French review mentions like six or seven uh, environments, but I don't. Th th there could be a lot of different track configurations for each environment. Yeah, I don't know. And one thing I hope, uh, uh, consider this is a uh, one-player game, is that your uh, computer fellow racers that they mm -hmm. have some sort of personality that make oh, the, the AI, racing yeah. yeah make the racing like uh, comp competitive yeah the AI needs to be like challenging but fair for each of the difficulty yeah. levels and uh, or just you know total assholes but you know still beatable not perfect computer precision so no. programming that yeah. in can be uh and be tricky but yeah so far it's got three reviews uh in 
two, two in a language that I'm mildly fluent in, but I don't speak Russian yet. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dungeon League. Uh, so the next title is Dungeon League. That uh, is a, uh, <laughs> is another kind of meme game where it's very, does not take itself seriously. Uh, it's a multiplayer action dungeon crawler. Uh, but yeah. Um, 10 minutes of chaotic competitive multiplayer action. Oh, okay. So it's a competitive dungeon crawler. Interesting. Hero versus hero. Compete in fast-paced action for you. Oh, okay. So each level takes, you know, about 10 minutes. Hmm. So that is like match, 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 length, match yeah. gaming, yeah. sort of. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it looks like you can have teams too, so you can do cooperative PvP. So you can have like your buddies help you screw over the other team, which is kind of neat. I do hope yeah. they have. Uh... Yes, they do have online co-op, so they have online multiplayer, online co-op. So it's not just couch co-op. That's good. They have like every gameplay possible. <laughs> yes. One player, many players, online, local, co-op, online co-op, local co-op. Oh wow, the character designs are amazing. So there's like that, uh, there's that like uh, unicorn male stripper looking one, and then there's also like a female <laughs> sumo wrestler looking one. Oh my gosh, they're very. Uh... I think this is games, a game that make you smile. Yeah. Yeah. This and one, also, this is also make you like. Like, I'm going to whoop your ass, my mm -hmm. friend, sort of thought. This game could actually be quite fun. Yeah, this could be quite fun. I'm definitely like, you know, maybe I'd be able to convince uh, my cousins and uh, some of my college friends to get together and play this online. Because uh, uh, it's, at the very least, it, it seems pretty interesting. Um, that sort of competitive dungeon crawling. I've not seen too many games attempt that. That's uh, that's really neat. Yeah, uh, this looks fun. Uh, so far, I'm seeing that uh, it's per it's a uh... <laughs> uh, it's it's really it's really fun. Um, probably better with four players than with two. Uh. Yeah. yeah. It, it's kind of a retro art style, which is fun. I like this guy. Uh, invite some friends. Play with your girl girlfriend. Not the naughty way, but the less naughty way of doing it in the 80s. Composed indie pixel dungeon crawler. What a, uh, what a funny fella. Um, yeah, this... Uh, battle strangers or humiliate friends. Oh, so this also has like matchmaking, online matchmaking. Very cool. Yeah, and you can also play this on, I think, any computer with, yep. the, with the graphic card. So I don't think I'm ready to put it on my wish list that's already like 120 long. Oh, no, I think I have 150 games in my wish list now. So I don't think I'm going to put it on my wish list. But at the very least, I think uh, this might be worth uh, checking out to you know play with friends or play against strangers. It's only $15. Um... You know, typical yeah. indie price. Uh, I'm seeing mostly like six hours. Oh, there's a 24 hour one. It it's definitely gonna mileage will vary depending on how much fun you have playing with people. So and yeah, and I think to have the most fun, you need to to just have some friends with you. Mm -hmm. uh, then I think you can have a blast. But uh, if you like go on your own. Well, I think this is more like a friend game mm -hmm. in my eyes. Right. And uh, with that, our next title is Phantom Halls. Uh, this is developed by Incendium LLC. Which, what else have they done? Nope, this is the only thing they have. They've got a nice fancy name, but this is the first game. So, Incendium. 
this is a squad-based side-scrolling comedy horror game, uh, per their uh, per their description right there. Single player and local co-op supported, but um, so it seems like you swap between your different like set of characters as you go through the haunted house, and each of your characters has different tools and ways to get past different obstacles. Um, you know what? It seems very again like a, a game that doesn't take itself too seriously. I wouldn't describe this as horror. It's clearly more of a uh, I don't know. It has a horror theme, but comedy it's, horror. Yeah, maybe. yeah. It's very much a uh, very much kind of a fun sort of uh, you know dungeon crawler, pretty much. But it's just side scrolling and not platforming. Oh, look! There's a demon. Just a straight up demon. Unique three D paper craft visual style. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of like uh, if you've ever seen Firewatch, where the characters in Firewatch were, weren't paper, but the whole environment used that kind of paper, you know, folded paper aesthetic. Which, yep. uh, you know, is a pretty good aesthetic. It's a good way to save money on um, artwork and, uh, uh, and you know, textures without sacrificing aesthetic. Like, it looks really nice. Very clean looking. So... And kudos to all the uh, blood spray. <laughs> I read a funny thing about this game, and it includes officially licensed Evil Dead 2 content. Evil Dead? So, official licensed Evil Dead 2 content in this game. That is, that is a fun, fun thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Evil Dead. Wow. So, uh, huh. Ash from Evil Dead. That is, uh, that is awesome. Like the artwork, but doesn't look like there's much going on. Uh, yeah, it definitely seems more of like not exactly a fast-paced game. You're just kind of swapping to different characters to be in front to, you know, do their stuff. Um, yeah, I. I don't think it's really my type of game, but uh, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's got mostly positive views at the moment, um, and it doesn't seem to require too much from your computer either. So if you don't have a gaming PC, this might be a game you want might may want to check out. Oh, yeah, I will put this on my wish list though. Uh, And maybe I, I go through my wish list uh, <laughs> in the future and see, well, this game, yeah. But mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm thinking like you, it's not my kind of game, but still, well, official Evil Dead 2 content. Uh, <laughs> I'm an Evil Dead fan, so Ooh. that... That will, like, yeah, I will see in the future. It's on a wish list, and then future will Oh, come neat. So it even has a lot of RPG elements, because, like, each character is unique with their own skill tree, special abilities, and spawn weapon. You can, uh, yeah, so they each have their own skill tree and stuff to customize them a bit. And, uh, yeah, there's also cosmetic upgrades. This guy has 55 hours of play in it. But um, let me see. All right, the game the gameplay can seem repetitive as, as um he says. You search for things, kill things, explore, finish the mission, then leave the mansion. Um, but he does say there's a wide variety of different types of missions. So yeah. Uh. Yep. I will keep my eyes open. From someone who got fifty hours worth of gameplay out of it, it's gonna cost you about twenty bucks. So, yeah. and yeah, Rody said, yeah, Rody says she's like the likes the artwork, but uh, yeah. Um, next uh, title is the Land of the Sea Zogs. Okay. Uh, Professor Meme. 
in the land of the Seasog. So they're literally being on the nose about memes. But uh, this is sort of that very old pixel art. Like this is like Commodore 64 pixel art. Except there, yeah. it's very detailed right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it seems to be this kind of uh, point and click adventure type game that, you know, with a limited color palette and, you know, this does legit look like a game I would see on uh, Commodore 64 with, you know, some somewhat unsettling visuals. Yep. Yeah, it is a click and a point and click adventure sort of game. Uh... This is not my kind of game, but still, I. This is games that I like to watch when people play. Mm -hmm. People that know the games and uh, know that are really into games like this. I can watch them play games like this for ages, but. Well. Uh, yeah. It's a. Uh, it's just a very. It's a, it's a very. It interests me, but I'm not sure it's enough to like really put it on my re put it on my wish list. But it definitely was very interesting to me because like this just seems seems so weird, uh, and yet uh, this it has this weird sense of consistency that you know I, I guess you could call it polish uh, that uh, definitely made it stand out from the rest of releases. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it does. If you're and, into quirky point and clicks, this might be your game. Yeah, and I wonder if uh, the sound in this game are like it was back then, because if it is, I will probably, uh, if I play this game, I will probably play it without sound, because... <sighs> yeah, yeah, I love the old games way back on the... C64, like uh, Amiga sort of games. Yes, I do, but uh, oh. games like this usually have a sound that are like more or less the same. So apparently, hours. this one has a fully, uh, fully self composed uh, a soundtrack. So it's got its own, you know, oh. it's not, it's not a, it's not the necessarily the same track. Um, but yeah, it uses modern sound, uh, and it's so it's essentially like a sci-fi mystery, uh, mystery storyline with apparently alternative readings and surprises. So maybe it's that type the type of game that's like where you have to draw your own conclusions. But uh, yeah, that's uh. It, it's it's definitely interesting. It's definitely interesting, and I am very curious. Uh, it's got no user reviews yet. It costs you about six dollars, uh, which is perfectly reasonable. Um, you know, depending on how long it is. If it's like a thirty-minute experience, maybe six dollars is too much. But uh, you don't require a gaming PC for this. It's very uh, simple aesthetic of game. <laughs> Good. Sorry. Um, it is uh, developed by Manuel Garcia, and this is his only game. So I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious about the game, and yeah, it's going on my wish list just because I am so very curious. And I like point and click games. So. Yeah, it is something interesting with games like this, but still, uh, when you cannot try them like a demo or something, you mm -hmm. be like. Well, as you said, is it uh, uh, six bucks and uh, 20 minutes gameplay, or is it six bucks and two hours gameplay? Um, yeah. yeah, if it's a good story and it's, you know, just an hour or two, or, or two hours, probably, uh, six bucks would definitely be worth it. But if it's, you know, a 30 minute experience that you can kind of solve and then go like, oh, that's it. Mm. Yeah, so it definitely seems like a fairly small scope game, but you know it really depends on how they sort of tell the story. Because uh, yep. I'm only seeing a handful of environments, but I mean maybe this isn't showing everything. So 
It could be the next uh, Undertale, for all we know. Yeah, and you're right there, Roderpy, that point-and-click puzzles are what will make or break this game. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, last title of Wednesday, October 31st, is Cheeky Chooks. Uh, this is a free title that uh, I do believe, if I read this right... Um, let me see. I do believe... I read something about this being... Um, you know, this this is being a game that sort of either like has some uh, has some connection to a humane society. You know, for, for um, you know, humane treatment of you know farm animals, animals and stuff. But uh, I am not seeing that here. I remember when I was first looking at it, and I don't. Hmm. I don't see it. Uh, yes, RSPCA. Oh, says in the publisher. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, the publisher is RSPCA. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. There we go. So, yeah, this is developed by Trilum Studios. It's basically a chicken... Uh, it's like almost like a chicken coop tycoon, basically. Uh, the chickens all have... They're um, all have UI, so different chickens will have different personalities and behaviors. And uh, so, yeah, it's kind of that fun, like, you know, I would imagine this would be kind of similar to Slime Rancher. That, you know, you're kind of just raising all these different unique chickens. Yeah, this, game's, uh, this game is like uh, making me curious. And I, I think I have to try this game because Oops. it's like some, if you click the pictures, it's like, well, I don't know. It's, the, it's a sort of game that I have never mm -hmm. been playing and I need to like play it. <laughs> It's a. It's also a really neat sort of two D animation where it's like, uh, I, I, it's not quite flash. Well, maybe it is like kind of that flash animation. Um, it it's got a neat, very cute aesthetic. Uh, you see, like you know, a rare chook, and I like how they call their chickens chooks. That's just that's just sort of funny. It's just chuko vision. Happiness. Uh, and he loves playing on the arcade cabinets. Aw, so each of them have their own sort of, each of the chickens have their own sort of bio, so you get to learn about each of the individual chickens. Um, but one yeah. egg, <laughs> one egg every four seconds. Yeah, I, I need to try this game. Uh, but yeah, uh, and yeah, the reviews have mostly been describing it as a fairly chill game. Um... Some have even described it as an idol. There's no microtransactions, uh, apparently. Yeah. No paid content whatsoever. Uh, it's just... Uh, it's a completely free game with no microtransaction. It's just uh, the uh, Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Um, yeah, it's an animal welfare charity. So it's just they're just trying to raise awareness about it. And so if you yes. wish, you can uh, donate yes. to the Royal A sort Society. of educational game that teach you how to, to take care of, in this case, chickens? Yep. Juice. It looks like they even had a Halloween event, the Cluckanine. Uh, and they got an update recently fixing a bunch of bugs. So, yep. Yeah, so if you need a free game, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to end up trying this out. It's free. So why not? Ah! Oh no, I closed everything. One moment. Yeah. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, everything's up again. Oh. Yes. Uh, I hit a button on my mouse that closes all windows. <laughs> well, it minimizes all windows. It's like, oh no! <clears throat> Okie doke. Yes, cheeky jukes. That's a that is a cute game. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm not normally into farm sims, but you know what? If it's free and it's a uh, and 
You know, it's just a fun, chill sort of chicken. I So, little story. I used to have a chicken coop as a kid, so I had about 40 chickens that I would help raise, and we always had fresh eggs. And, yeah, it is very true. Each one of the chickens has a very unique sort of personality. And we didn't have, like, one type of chicken. We had a whole bunch of different types. So we had some chickens that laid brown eggs. Others would lay green eggs. Um, well, it's kind of like a greenish-blue. Others white eggs. Uh... You know, they all came in different sizes, some bantam, then they would just lay eggs like that are like that big. Others, you know, that would lay huge eggs. It was just this whole mix. Yep. Yeah, chickens are adorable. And some of them yeah, are really are. sweet. Some of them are really sweet and friendly if you if you raise them right. Well, and some of them, even if you do raise them right, they're just assholes. So it really depends on the chicken. Um, but yeah, it's uh it's it's definitely it's definitely charmed me. It's definitely charmed me. So uh, good I job. Had a pe- I had a, pe- a pet chicken when I was uh, a kid. So, well, this is a cool game. Yep. Yep. And uh, so the final game we're we're on a really cute theme this week. My word, it's it's supposed to be Halloween. And though we started with like Call of Cthulhu and uh, you know the witch's house, orphan. Um, it's really been a lot of like sort of cute games this last week, which is sort of funny. Uh, this last one, we're going to cap it off with Meow Motors, which is an Unreal Engine cat, you know, anthropomorphic, anthropomorphic cat version of Mario Kart. Yep. And you know what? I was old because it's cats. So this is going on my wish list because I'm a sucker for cats. Um, it's $20. It's done by Art Vostok, developer. Okay, this is the only game. I, Art Vostok. I feel like I've seen that name before, and I'm not entirely sure where. Yeah, and you can play four, four people on the same screen. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so yeah, full... A shared split screen, single player. Does this have online multiplayer? I'm not seeing any notes for online multiplayer. No. But I still, they are making updates and stuff for this game, so uh, it's it's very much alive. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it did uh, just launch. Well, we'll see if it keeps supporting it, but yeah. Oh, it was in early access before this. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, they've been regularly having updates all the time. They have all the all the different kitties. Oh, look at that! Thank you. This will definitely go on my wish list. Yeah. No. This looks like this looks like just uh, just simple crazy fun. Um. Uh, does it? Let me see. Any mentions? I'm seeing a lot of non-English reviews. Okay. Uh, oh, really? Better graphics and a fresh story? There's a story campaign for this? Uh, hmm. Games Crown needs a lot of improvement. Uh, okay. Okay, so apparently the controller um, functions aren't really up to par yet but granted that could have been a early access review so this is very much a game that is subject to change but uh yeah you know what i'm definitely gonna check it out it is going for twenty dollars so uh they're definitely going the full way but you know what they uh, definitely put the art and the uh the character into the game you know to demand those twenty dollars let me see how many how how many hours are people getting out of this? Seven? Nine? And this is a racing game, so it's supposed to have a lot of replay value, hopefully. It does have a lot of reviews. So, um, yeah, Meow Motors. <laughs> Big well, Daddy, yo. Hi. Uh, I also like that it's Unreal Engine, so... Um, hello, folks, and uh, stop bullying. We are we are just wrapping up with the last, uh, and that and that pretty much wraps up the release list right there. That's all. That is all. 